Mona Williams, Coach Mona, and I'm here each and every Monday with Monday's Motivations, where I teach biblical information for spiritual transformation. So we are just excited for the word on this week. Good morning. Hey, Sister Terry. So come on in the room and let's get to it. Good morning, Donna. I see you. Um, so we're in Luke chapter 15. Uh, we will be um, teaching th today. Um, this week's teaching is about a restored life. A restored life. Teaching from the prodigal son. From the prodigal son. Now in this story, we know we have three uh, three main characters. We have the father and we have his two sons. And I'm not going to read uh, the entire passage. I'm just going to read the one of the key verses in, in this chapter 15. And this is the younger son. So let me uh, summarize the story. So Jesus is giving a parable to these uh, tax collectors who he was talking to in the previous uh, verses. And so he goes on to tell three stories. The story about um, the lost sheep, the lost coin, and then the lost son. So in the story with the lost son, he tells of how a father had two sons and the younger son wanted his inheritance early. So he asks his father for his inheritance and the father gives it to him. And after he receives his inheritance, he leaves home and he goes and lives this wasteful life. So that's why he's called the prodigal son, because he lives this wasteful life. He goes out partying, drinking, uh, just all kinds of stuff with the money. And so what happens is he ends up in want. He spends it all. He loses all his friends because now his money has ran out. And then he's ended up living in a hog pen. Now, mind you, these are uh, Jewish people. So they don't even eat, eat pig. They don't even eat pig. So now he's to a point in his life where all these people he party with, uh, they're nowhere to be found. He can't even uh, sleep on their couch or anything. But they're, one of these friends, I guess, allow him to uh, sleep where the hogs sleep. And he's even to the point where he's eating what they eat. And while he's there, he's at his lowest of lows. Mind you, he came from a wealthy Jewish family, okay? And now he's at a point, he's at his lowest of low. He's wasted all that money. He have. He has no friends now. He's left his father's home. And he thinks to himself. It said he came to his senses. So in life, when we are at our lowest of low, that can be a time. And that's usually a time when we come to our senses. Like when we have exhausted all uh, means, when we have just done all that we wanted to do. And now we're in a place where only thing we... only person that could help us that we know is God and that's when we come to our senses but do you know sometimes we don't even do that so the son comes to his senses and he says in uh Luke 15 verse 18 he says I'm gonna have to read 17 first and when he came to himself he said how many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. Verse 19. And am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And so the son says, you know what? Even the servants at my father's house have bread and enough to spare. He says, I'm going home. And I'm going to ask my father if I can be a servant. So I could at least get some bread. Because <laughs> hanging out with these pigs is not for me. <laughs> and so he headed home. And it says how his father saw him afar off. It doesn't tell us how long this son had been gone. He probably was gone for a nice little while. Uh, if, if, if We're sure he had uh, quite a bit of money. And it says that the father saw him afar off and he ran and met the son and hugged him and kissed him. And the father was so ha happy that his son was back home. And he said that he, 
He said, kill the fatty calf. He put a robe on him. He put a ring on his finger. And they had a celebration. He says, for my son who was dead is now alive. This father had had uh, felt that his son had died. But now he sees that he is still alive. Now, when we're talking about in this parable, first of all, about the lost sheep and the lost coin. In those parables, Jesus bring us out, brings out that the two that these these two that were lost, that the one for the sheep, he says, if a if a shepherd has one sheep that is lost, he is going to go find that one sheep, even though he may have ninety nine. He says, and when he finds that one sheep, he brings them back home and and rejoices. He said, it's the same in heaven. When someone gives their life to God, that the angels rejoice in heaven. And so he gave those two parables to show that even though something is lost, you have to go find it. And so in the in the story of the lost sheep and the lost coin, those two things were found. Those individuals went out to find them. The lost coin was lost in the house, but she swept that house until she found that coin. But with the parable son, it doesn't say that the father went searching and looking for the son. It didn't say that. But the father waited for the son. And isn't that just like God? When we go astray or when we are living a life that's not pleasing to him, when we're doing our own thing, God waits for us with open arms. He loves us. He cares. But he allows us to have free will. He allows us to have free will. So he's just sitting back waiting, like waiting. He has time. But the question is, do we have time? Do we have time to waste thinking we got tomorrow promised? We do not. And so when we come to our senses, we need to know that God is still there waiting on us. So this story is about a backslider. And not just the backslider, which represents the younger son. And the father represents God. But then you have the older brother who was self-righteous. He was upset now that the younger son is home and the father is giving him a party. So he didn't go to the party. So the father knows that he's not at the party. And he goes out and says, son, come on in. Let's party. We have to celebrate. Your brother who was dead is now, you know, he's alive. We're celebrating. He says the older son is he's upset he says, I've been here with you all this time. I've been obedient. I've done all that you wanted me to do. And you never killed the calf. You never gave me this type of party. And I'm upset about it. But here it is, this son who has wasted all of that money you gave him. And you're giving him a party? What about me? What about me, Father? I've been the faithful one. And so we have to be careful as Christian believers not to become jealous or envious of anyone who God blesses. God can bless who, whom he chooses to bless. And so we want to be happy and rejoice with them. And so the father said, son, all that I have is yours. We're celebrating because my son. My son and your brother, he's alive. He is well. That is what this celebration is about. He's lost his inheritance. He's wasted his inheritance. So you still have your inheritance. Everything that I own belongs to you. So let's go celebrate because your brother, he's still alive and we love him. He's our family. That is what this party is about. A celebration of life. Not about what he's going to get or if he's still going to get an inheritance. No, he wasted his money. He asked for it too early. And he didn't use wisdom when I did give it to him. And so, um, you know, that's the whole gist of this story. But let me give you some points I have down here. First of all, our inheritance is eternal. And so it's through the work of Jesus Christ, through God's love, of sacrificing his only son, shedding his innocent blood, that we can be uh, reconciled back to God so that our sins can be forgiven. We have eternal life. We have salvation. Salvation means being saved. And the Greek means uh, soteria. And, it, and you break that word down into the Hebrew, it means shalom, which means peace. 
which means nothing missing, nothing broken, means complete, whole, good health, wealth, safety, rest. So our salvation encompasses so much more than just being saved. It's having a whole and complete life here on earth. And then the world will disappoint and leave us spiritually without. We will go lacking if we allow the world to feed our spirit, to feed our soul. If we allow the world to rule over our lives more than we allow God. That's what happened to the prodigal son. He got caught up in worldly pleasures, in a sinful life, satisfying his fleshly nature. And it disappointed him. He ended up in the hog pen. Being led by sin leads to becoming a slave to it. When we allow sin to rule our life, we then become slaves to sin. And sin is wrongdoing. And then we end up living beneath God's standards for our life. And we can even end up living beneath human standards. Because it says that this son was in now living and sleeping with the hogs and eating what they eat. Mind you, he is Jewish. He does not even touch the pig. Like that's not that's not what they do. That's filth. That's unclean to them. And so we have to be careful. You can read John chapter 8, verse 34. Hey Dory, welcome. And then I have the pig pen will leave you malnourished malnourished spiritually and physically next transformation requires letting go and letting God transformation requires us allowing God to work on us from the inside out that's when you have real lasting change not just this outward show that you can fake it till you make it and you can you know, do it for some time, but the real you will always show up. The real me will show up if I'm not living and allowing God to transform me from the inside out. Luke chapter 17, verse 33, you can read. And then repentance is making a change in your direction and walking in the direction and living in the direction of your life towards God. So repentance is making a change in direction and having a heart toward God. It's not just saying, Lord, forgive me. No, it's making the necessary changes that you're godly sorrowful and you want to change and you actually make the change. The next one is we need to guard our hearts. We need not judge others. And we should want God's best for every Christian believer and for every person. In the earth realm. If someone is not saved. We should want God's best for them. Which means we should first pray for them. To receive God in their life. And if we can minister to them. Or share our testimony. We need to do that. So we need to always. Practice living a non-judgmental non life. Operating and not being jealous or envious. Of anyone else's blessing. And have a heart of God. And then we need to guard our heart. When those feelings rise up in us, because they do, if we be honest, we need to nip it in the bud right then. We need to say, self, that is not right. And then we need to take it to God. God, I feel this type of way. I know it's not right. It's not pleasing. I do not want to feel jealousy. I do not want to feel envy. I do not want to keep judging people. I'm not their God. You're their God. So remove that those spirits from me. Remove those inward feelings from me. See, we have things that come up within us that people can't see. If we keep silent, there's stuff that come up in us that everyone can't see, but we know it's there and we need to deal with it. Amen. Hey, Tarsha. Good morning. Um, and, and lastly, I have rejoice when a backslider or a sinner gives their life to Christ. We need to rejoice and be happy that they are now part of the family. John chapter 1 verse 12, that they are now found because they were once lost. Or they were in a black, back, black, backslidden state. Okay? And so that is our um, motivation for today from the word of God. Um, a restored life. And I pray that you have received 
and we um, pray that you would share this out and share it with someone else. And remember that God loves you. He has open arms waiting for you if you have backslidden, if you have strayed away from following him. He is there for you. We would pray that you have a good church home. You know, God wants us to be in fellowship with one another. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Find you a good church home. Uh, if you're unsure, pray about it. If you have friends who have a church home, just go visit with family or friends for now until God leads you into a place where he has for you to grow and nurture in your spiritual uh, uh, life and walk. Um, so God loves us. His grace and mercy is always there for us. And again, he loves us unconditionally. It doesn't matter what we have done. As long as we come to our senses and change the direction of our ways and go in the direction toward him, he is there with open arms just like this prodigal son's father was when he saw him coming back home. He was so excited. And so we want to just go ahead and pray out and we will be with you on next Monday. Amen. And don't forget to comment that you were here so that I will uh, know you were here and I will I always reply. Hey, Miss Fields, welcome. We're about to pray out, so catch the replay, those of you who are coming on now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for this day, for this is the day that you have made. We want to rejoice and be glad in it. And God, we just pray that you, first of all, forgive us of our sins, creating us a clean heart and renew the right spirit within us. And God, we pray for each and every person that's watching this broadcast live or the replay, and God, for myself as well. God, we lift up each and every family that is represented um, watching this video uh, and hearing and receiving your word on today. God, you know all that we stand in need of. So God, we just send your word that you would uh, heal and bring healing and restoration to our lives. And God, we thank you for it. And God, we thank you for forgiving us. We thank you for restoring our life. God, be with us in this day. Give us all that we stand in need of, um, Father God, all that um, we need to deal with on this day. Um, God, and we thank you for it. And all these and other blessings we ask in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. And we thank God. And so we will see you all on next Monday for Monday's Motivations. And we will talk to you then.